going to be going over porcelain and how we treat it in our office so that we can make sure we have the best adhesion between the actual restoration, that being a crown, and the tooth. And this is going to be one of a couple different part series on how we go through treating porcelain and the tooth so that when we put the two together, they're the best. Uh, at least the best uh, mix of both worlds that we want, trying to balance out the pros and cons of each. Uh, this video is going to focus specifically on how we treat the internal of the restoration before we get it ready to be cemented or bonded into place. Other videos will include how we treat the tooth, uh, the different kinds of cements, the different kinds of crown materials, and then uh, how all that goes together. So this is going to be part of a multi-video series on porcelain and uh, adhering it to the tooth. So let's start with this. And this is going to be the one graph or the one table we're going to use throughout all of these different presentations is showing basically the most of the scenarios that we run into. Uh, the different types of restorations are going down the side and then how we treat the, the tooth, so how we treat the preparation, uh, meaning the, uh, the restoration, and then how we're going to also treat the actual tooth and then what cement we're going to use and how that curing process happens. So this video is just going to be focusing on that blue area up at the top, talking about sandblasting, Ibuclean, HF, Etch, Monobond Plus, and the bonding agent so that we know what we're doing on the internal surfaces of these crowns before we put them in place. So let's start with a very simple thing, uh, sandblasting. The medium that we use to sandblast is aluminum oxide. Um, it is. Uh, it comes in 27 or 25 micron up to 50 micron. Uh, there's different directions call for different sizes, but 50 seems to work just fine. That seems to be the most popular size. Uh, they want us to blast the internal of a restoration for 15 seconds with this uh, Danville Engineering uh, sand blaster. I think pretty much everyone has this in their office. And of course, this handy little micro cab picture down at the bottom shows a nice way of keeping that sand from uh, making the lab a mess. Um, they want you, and then also when you're done sandblasting for that 15 seconds, to thoroughly rinse. Some people say go ahead and put that into a uh, ultrasonic bath, and others say just simply wash and dry with an air water. Uh, either way, you want to make sure you get all of the granules out of that uh, restoration before you, you know, continue on to the next steps. What I've heard, I've heard mixed things about using this on lithium disilicate restorations, meaning Emacs, so veneers and crowns. Uh, in our office, we're just not going to sandblast it because some of the instructions say specifically not to. Uh, the material from Ibuclar Vivident, meaning Emacs, uh, they actually go on and say, you know, not to sandblast the internal of an Emacs restoration. They want you to instead use hydrofluoric acid. So we're just not going to do sandblasting of those types of restorations. We will, however, sandblast metal and zirconia. All right, I have a clean. This is what we will use instead uh, to clean the internal lithium disilicate. And even on, um, on um, zirconia, we will use this as well. It's a porcelain decontaminant. Whenever you have a crown, you get it from the lab, uh, or if the patient you know, has lost a crown, you got to clean it out. Once you try it in to make sure everything fits well, there's saliva that gets inside of that crown. And that saliva contains a lot of phosphates. And phosphates will bind to the internal surface, especially the zirconia, um, and can cause the adhesion not to be as good as it could be. So you want to make sure you get all of the um, all of the decam uh, de uh, de <laughs> contaminants out. You want to decontaminate it. Uh, the main working uh, active ingredient here is potassium hydroxide, and Ibuclean seems to be the most popular brand right now. However, there is one called Zirclean that's used on the internal of zirconia restorations to again get, get the phosphates off of those receptor sites. I have a clean. Um, here's the entire instructions. If you want to pause the video here and read them, feel free. This is on their website as well. Some key points, though, that I wanted to circle is that you place Ibuclean after you've tried it in the mouth. Okay, right when you say, okay, everything looks good, the contacts look good, that the x-ray shows that it's fitting well in the margins, that floss as well, this crown is good to go. This is the time when you would start this cleaning process. So whenever you have any kind of saliva introduction into the crown, you have to get that uh, the contaminant off of there. So that's where Ibuclean comes in. Shake the bottle before using. Some of that, some of that, um, the, the material inside it gets kind of separated. So if you need to shake it, I mean you do need to shake it before you actually use it. When you place it in there, you're going to paint it in there for 20 seconds, then wash it out, and you're good to go. If you decide, oh, let me check one more thing, you go back into the mouth to check it after you've done Ibuclean and you got saliva in there. 
you got to take it back and go and do the Iva clean again. This is from the Iva Clara Viva Dents website showing how cleaning of an Emax crown. Uh, if you take a non-contaminated Emax crown and you try uh, bonding to it and then see what that bond strength is like, this is what they get. So this is the control. If you simply just wash it with water thinking, well, that looks good enough. I think I'll just wash that stuff off of there and we should be good to go. It does decrease the bonding by quite a bit. If you use phosphoric acid, you can increase that. But if you use Ivoclean, you will even be a slightly better than the control group. However, if you use um, phosphoric acid on the internal surface of a zirconia oxide crown, like a Bruxer type of crown, you actually make it even worse. So instead of trying to remember, do we clean the inside or do we not clean the inside with phosphoric acid, we just don't clean any crowns internally with phosphoric acid because we don't want to uh, have someone get confused and accidentally try to clean this out when they could use it on the Emacs. But, you know, we just say forget trying to use the blue etch, the phosphoric acid inside of any crown. Instead, we're going to use Ivoclean to clean it completely uh, to get it ready for the next step. Next step, if it is a bondable, uh, something you're going to use a resin a cement with, you're going to have to have uh, hydrofluoric acid. I always refer to it as HF acid. This is when used when porcelain is being bonded. Again, if you're using like a veneer cement or some kind of resin cement, you're going to use this step. Um, you're not going to need it if you're going to be using a regular traditional cement like a resin modified glass ionomer. This is simply for uh, getting a restoration ready for bonding. And we only use this for external use only. Uh, we're not going to use it for porcelain repair, intraorally, uh, trying to repair an access hole through um, an endo accessed crown. Uh, this is the risk is too high, it's too caustic, uh, and it may cause some problems with the soft tissue, with the actual tooth itself. So we're just not going to use this intraorally. There are, there are ways to repair intraorally, and we'll get to that in later videos, but just know that for hydrofluoric acid, HF, the yellow stuff, we're going to use it only extra orally for restoration that is going to be bonded into place. For those restorations that we were bonding in place before we used to place silane, this material Monobond Plus is kind of like a silane replacement. It actually does have some silane methacrylates in it along with some other functional groups that make this um, material, it, it helps improve the um, adhesion, again, of the cement or the resin uh, to the actual crown itself. So it's a very simple process. It's just one drop. You put it inside, let it air dry for 60 seconds, and then you air out the rest uh, that might still be there. It is $110 a bottle. So of course you just use one drop per restoration or per uh, case. And the application is pretty simple. Again, if you're going to sandblast the interior of uh, some kind of restoration, or you're going to etch it. So zirconia, remember sandblast, glass, ceramics, meaning Emacs, lithium, I like it's feldspath, like pressed porcelain, those kinds of things you're going to etch with the hydrofluoric acid. You wash that off, you know, you, uh, the, um, you apply the mono bond plus, wait 60 seconds, and then you know, dry off any excess, and you're good to go. The whole idea is to make sure that the, whatever the restoration is, if it's made out of porcelain, zirconia, or even gold for that matter, you're going to want the surface to be ready to be what we'll call it active, an active surface, meaning that the actual cement or resin that you're going to be applying will stick well to that restoration. Um, so you want to have an active surface. We usually refer to this as a coupling agent. This is when we referred to silane in the past when we were going to bond something in place. We would use a coupling agent called silane. Well, Monobond Plus is the silane replacement and it makes the surface uh, active or easy to accept whatever cement you're going to put in place. Don't need to worry about all the chemistry here, but basically you have a, like a silicate surface, again like an Emax or any kind of other porcelain, and then you have the silane methacrylate that's contained within Monobond Plus. When you dab this inside the crown, what happens is it bonds to that surface and now creates this surface which now is available to uh, attract and hold on to whatever cement you put in place. Again, same kind of thing here with you have a zirconia crown, like a Bruxer. You can coat the interior surface with this. This is the Monobond Plus, and then when it does attach, this uh, active surface now is going to bond really well to whatever cement that you use. And lastly, we're going to use, oops, sorry, 
There we go. Uh, lastly, we're going to use on the interior of a bonded restoration, we're going to use this. It's clear fill universal bond quick. It is going to be painted on the interior of a crown or on the tooth. Again, only if we're going to be bonding. That means veneers or some kind of Emacs, we're going to use a resin cement. In future videos where we talk about the different cements, this will make more sense, but just know that not every case we're going to use clear fill. It's only when we're going to be bonding. If I were to go back and reference this chart again, you can see the preparation of the restoration. Uh, we've talked about these things across the top, and as you go down this list, you'll be able to see when we do and when we don't use these different materials. So uh, that is video number one, talking about the preparation of the restoration, getting it ready to be cemented or bonded into place. Thank you.